tomorrow we should get all of the information, well, at least all the information that AMD wants to give us about their new GPUs. And well, a few things are leaking out right now, or not even necessarily leaking out, but we're getting some more information today, whole bunch more tomorrow. I'm gonna give you a lot of my thoughts though. I'm getting so many comments about like, can AMD beat Nvidia? Will AMD crush Nvidia? So I'm gonna start out with what do I know so far? What are my thoughts on that question? And then if we have time, we'll get into the rest of the hardware news today, but I've gotta get to parent teacher conferences in a bit. I'm gonna be so busy today and tomorrow. It's like, we're working to like 8.30 at night, but anyway, whatever, that's not, that's that's not your guys' problem, that's my problem. But anyway, so, okay, first of all, what do we have? Will AMD beat Nvidia? Well, we can answer that question in different ways depending on how we interpret that question. One way to interpret that question is just in rasterized performance. Will they beat, will they have the top GPU? Are they going to be able to beat the RTX 4090? But there's another way of looking at this, which is also price to performance how competitive will they be? And that's a whole other question. But then the other question is, can they catch up in other features? Now let's actually start there for a second uh, because that's actually some new information, sort of. Well, what am I getting here? According to WCCF Tech, uh, is they said AMD confirms Radeon RX 7000 RDNA 3 GPUs to include new features targeting high resolution and high frame rate gaming. Now, where is this information coming from? Well, this is coming directly from AMD's CEO, Dr. Lisa Su, and this is in an investor call. So there's what you know companies will tell people in marketing, their consumers. And then there's what they're gonna tell their investors. And to my knowledge, there's a lot of laws about you know lying to your investors and whatnot, right? So when when CEOs tell investors things, there's a good reason to, you know, take note. So here's the interesting quote. So they say, uh, so Lisa Su says to investors, gaming graphics revenue declined in the quarter based on soft consumer demand and our focus on reducing downstream GPU inventory. We will launch our next generation RDNA 3 GPUs later this week that combine our most advanced gaming graphics architecture with five nanometer chiplet designs. More on the chiplet designs and all of that in a second, but here we go. Our high-end RDNA 3 GPUs will deliver strong increases in performance and performance per watt compared to our current products and include new features supporting high resolution, high frame rate gaming. We look forward to sharing more details later this week. Now, this is interesting. New features. What new features? Because that's a big deal. Now they say that it's supporting high resolution, high frame rate gaming. So a big question here is, does AMD have an answer to DLSS 3 with the frame generation technique? Now, my opinion on that is no, I don't think this will be that. But another question could be, is there an FSR 3 that's maybe not frame generation, but is a hardware accelerated uh, you know, type of um, you know, DLSS competitor? FSR 2.0 is a better competitor to DLSS than 1.0 was. But, you know, Intel and NVIDIA both have hardware acceleration for their upscaling technologies, including some machine learning to training that algorithm itself. AMD doesn't. So I'm curious if this will be something along those lines, some kind of an FSR 3, but we will see. So in other words, now let's take this towards, you know, what are we going to be seeing from AMD? Can they beat NVIDIA? NVIDIA has a software advantage. With, with DLSS, it is a bit better than FSR, even the 2.x versions. Um, you know, the FSR has its advantages with broad support of older GPUs, that kind of thing. But, you know, DLSS generally does have a small image quality advantage. It currently has better, you know, game support list. And again, it, you know, it has the hardware acceleration. And, and then there is down the new frame generation feature. So can they do something with that? NVIDIA also has a big ray tracing lead and can AMD catch up there? Because in the past, I've said that I don't think, you know, when you're buying a lot of current GPUs, 
I often recommend AMD GPUs at the lower price ranges because certainly they just sell for less money to give you similar rasterized performance. And yeah, they get beat in ray tracing, but at lower performance tiers, even NVIDIA GPUs, I don't think get enough ray tracing performance to, for it to be particularly relevant. But at the high end, when you start looking at like the 3080, something like that, and now getting into the 4090, ray tracing is very, very usable, especially at 1440p, but even going into 4K. So AMD does need to step up their ray tracing game at the high end, especially to actually be able to compete on a, on a reasonable feature set with NVIDIA. Because I thought with the last generation, the value of ray tracing was more questionable. But NVIDIA, at least at the high end right now with the 4090, is delivering very, very, very compelling ray tracing performance. And that's gonna matter a whole heck of a lot more now than it did before. Now, the other thing though is I don't think AMD just needs to, uh, you know, offer as good of performance as NVIDIA. And can they beat them? I mean, what do we actually know about the performance that AMD can deliver? Well, we're going to find out a whole lot more tomorrow, so I don't want to spend forever talking about this. But AMD has already told us at least something. And this was a long time ago. They told us their RDNA 3 targets were targeting a greater than 50% performance per watt uplift uh, compared to their RDNA 2 architecture. Now, you can only extrapolate so far off of this because it's unclear exactly which GPUs running at exactly uh, which you know, power draw level, how many watts are we talking here, uh, are we taking this measurement reading at? Because the, um, the GPUs might not be running at the peak of their efficiency curve. So to be clear, we can only extrapolate so much, but I'm gonna to try to start answering the question, is it even reasonable to expect AMD to be able to compete with the 4090? Well, the, uh, the RX 6900 XT, if we take that as a baseline, was a 300 watt uh, GPU, at least in its reference design, right? Which is what AMD should be talking about, is their reference designs. This was a 300 watt GPU and it came very close in performance to the RTX 3090 in rasterized performance, and at lower resolutions, might even be a bit ahead, all of that. Okay, so let's do a little bit of, uh, of, of you know, uh, inferencing here. So we've seen AMD's reference model of their top-end GPU. This is at least rumored to be their top-end GPU. And, you know, at least it's reference design. And it has two 8-pin power connectors. That means this is most likely, at most, a 375-watt card. I mean, it literally could only be 375 watts. Now, it could even target less than that. Because each of these can take 150 watts, and you can draw 75 watts from the motherboard. Now, more likely, it could even be 350 watts, something like that. So let's do a little bit of math. If you take, let's say, 350 watts and divide that by 300 watts, which is its predecessor, the 6900 XT, that gets you a 17% increase in wattage. We get this 1.6667 you know, number. Um, and anyway, so, so that's that. Now, if we take them at their word of a 50% performance per watt, now this is the thing that, first of all, this was a goal. It doesn't mean they actually hit it. And second of all, um, you know, again, this power draw amount at 350 watts and even 300 watts might not be the wattage that they're taking that 50% uplift reading from, okay? But if we take this and we multiply by 1.5, which would be a, um, which would be your 50% uplift, these numbers get us to a 75% performance increase. But again, this is just ballpark figures. Now, where would that put us? Well, the 4090, again, I, depending on which games you're talking about, this would put the, the, the performance in the ballpark of, maybe ahead of, maybe below, the RTX 4090. I just realized my head's in the way. Uh, but the 4090, again, this is tech power-ups chart. It's, it's not per completely perfect or exact. But right, that, that puts us in the ballpark of the 4090. So I think it's realistic that they could be in the ballpark of the 4090. 
But remember, they might not get a 50% performance per watt increase at these measurements. This could be, you know, like a 1.4 at a different point in the efficiency curve, something like that. But there could be other changes. Maybe it is, uh, they did say greater than, you know, 50% performance per watt. So maybe this is a 1.6 and maybe they are grabbing 375 watts out of that GPU. And that would give us a two times performance increase. And there was Graymon55 on Twitter leaking a two times performance increase target in rasterized performance. So, I mean, if you got a 60% performance per watt increase and went up to 375 watts and that increase was at these wattages, we would see this. But I'm gonna tell you right now, that's a lot of what ifs. And again, like I said, if this is more like 50 and this is really more like a 0.4 at these measurements, we're gonna see something I think more like this. So I think, 50 to 60% more performance than the 6900 XT sounds reasonable, and maybe more than that in ray tracing if they make some significant architectural changes. But if we take the question, is AMD going to defeat the RTX 4090? I would say the answer is in rasterized performance, maybe more likely a tie or a loss, but we'll find out more tomorrow. In ray tracing, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, I don't think that they'll catch up. Um, I am, but that's a huge question mark I'm hoping to see answered tomorrow. Now, the next thing I want to talk about, though, is price. And also, we don't need to compare the X7900 XTX flagship necessarily, because we also have the 7900 XT, and again, these are all rumored specs, but usually the night before things come out, we've got a pretty good idea of what to expect. So the 7900 XT versus the top-end XTX model um, is uh, rumored to be, you know, 10,752 out of 12,288 stream processors, the memory cut down to 20 instead of 24, the memory bus to 320 instead of 384. We're at 20 gigabit per second memory, all of that. The point is though, that the 7900 XT is not massively cut down from the XTX version if these numbers are, you know, confirmed. Now, let me pull up this chart that I used the other day. Um, now, you can ignore the other generations here for comparison, but what we're looking at here is the CUDA core percentage by GPU. And if you look at the 4090 compared to the 4080 16 gigabyte, that is a massive drop in the CUDA core percentage range, okay, compared to their full chip. That's a huge drop. AMD doesn't seem to be having that huge of a drop here. So what I think the more interesting thing to look out for isn't even can the 7900 XTX beat the RTX 4090, because I think in ray tracing it probably won't, and when we're talking massive flagships here, I think that actually matters, all of those features and all of that. But let's say the 7900 XTX comes in at, you know, like, Maybe this is competing against the 4080 at $1,200. Well, then it doesn't need to beat the 4090. It needs to beat the 4080. And like we said, the 4080, we don't have them out yet, but it is massively cut down from the 4090. Massively cut down. That's huge. So um, the other thing then is pricing. Let's say your 7900 XTX is coming in at $1,000 or $1,200 even, maybe even $1,300. But the 7900 XT, what if that came in at more like $800, right? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And if that's gonna give us, cause again, it's not hugely cut down from the XTX version. If that gave us something like the, uh, you know, beating the 4080, in other words, what if they fall in here, right? What if we have our 7900 XTX like here in, now this is CUDA core percentage, but now I'm talking per, uh, you know, actual performance. You know, what if the top end AMD card doesn't beat the 4090? Oh, well, it's good, but it comes in at way lower price. And then what if the next cut down version is at a significantly lower price, but beat the 4080 pretty badly? That would be interesting. So that's where I think AMD has a shot here. Also, it looks like AMD is not pushing these massive, ridiculous um, power draws and these massive, ridiculous coolers that would need to come with it. And that further cements that I think AMD can compete on price here if they want to. Because look, they're not buying the most expensive memory. 20 gigabit per second memory here is actually fairly slow compared to what they could have done. Now that hurts their performance. It also is something they could do on their 50 version, which I'm sure we will see at some point refresh next year. Um, that gives them room for improvement here, but also again, this money, uh, sorry, sorry, this is saving them money. 
Also, they have a chiplet design, right? That's the other thing that they talked about. The chiplet packaging saves them money. And the process they're on, I believe, is also less expensive than the process that NVIDIA is on. And NVIDIA has to price high to keep selling their 3000 series. And AMD doesn't have to price as high to keep selling their 6000 series because their 6000 series is currently selling way lower prices compared to NVIDIA. So in other words, I think AMD is set up extremely well to compete on price, if not performance and features. Although, like I said, we are hearing about some sorts of new features coming out. So there's a lot I want to hear about tomorrow. Also, their, um, their board partners could have some interesting designs. We are seeing Power Color talking about the devil. Now, to be clear here, if you're not familiar, Power Color has a red devil um, you know, branding on their high-end coolers. And they're talking about some sort of a giveaway here, which by the way, this could also indicate that we might actually see board partner cards uh, for AMD being talked about tomorrow because this is already kind of hinting at that right now. This is an interesting design, by the way. Uh, the video cards article talking about this uh, kind of looks at this cut out and overlaid over the AMD design here. So in other words, is that what we're seeing here? Is that the the um, the design that we'll see, you know, oriented this way over that design? Maybe we'll see this coming in from uh, from the board partners. But the thing is, the board partners don't have to limit themselves to the two eight pins. They could go with three. They could overclock these things. And so maybe if AMD was a little bit behind the forty ninety or whatever, you know, maybe their board partner cards could go nuts here. Also, like I said, I think there's a, there's a lot of room for a refresh. So I think AMD's biggest thing here could be their price to performance, and that's the main thing that I'm looking out for tomorrow. If November 3rd comes around and we get some great looking GPUs, but they're priced way too close to Nvidia, I'm not that excited. But the good news is then, no matter where they set the MSRPs, the free market, the demand is actually going to dictate what they sell for. Because AMD GPUs right now, are a way better value proposition, especially at the lower lower end, uh, compared to their NVIDIA GPU counterparts. But that's not because AMD wants to sell them for less. It's because they have to, because of their reputation for being the more value brand. You know, they don't have, you know, as good of a reputation on all of the drivers, everything like that. Anyway, I was going to talk about a whole bunch of other articles today, uh, but it looks like I can wait and do that, uh, save those for a future news video, because this video is already getting about 18 minutes long. I meant for this to be like a five minute beginning to my video. Apparently I just kept talking. I hope all of you have an excellent day, and we'll find out tomorrow if we are going to be singing AMD's praises. GPUs, I want to take one home. No, the next gen It won't be long At least a zoo Graphics mama <laughs> Let me take one home At least a zoo